So behind me, we have creatine, raw material made in Germany and Europe, end to end. And then we also have creatine made in China. Now we're gonna talk about the differences and why this is so important and explain how creatine is made. Because I think many people don't recognize that creatine is actually synthesized from, from actually coal manufacturing, uh, limestone. So limestone, uh, a, a compound from limestone is uh, utilized and mixed with the amino acid sarcosine. So I'm gonna give everyone a few minutes to hop on here and we're gonna talk about creatine. So behind me, as I mentioned, we got two different creatines, one made end to end in Germany, one raw material made in China. Now this is important because when you take creatine, you're not taking micrograms, you're taking five, 10, 20 grams per day. And so sourcing is particularly important. So I'm gonna wait for a few folks to get on. Thank you as always for being here. It's Mike Mutzel, really grateful that you're on with us live. I'm doing this from my phone here. We're actually at my manufacturing facility here in Arizona, and we have two different creatine sources behind us. We're gonna talk about the differences. Any comments, questions, let me know just streaming this from the cell phone today. All right. Okay, so let's dive into creatine sourcing, shall we? What do you think? Any comments, questions, let me know in the comment section below. So why does this matter? Okay, so certain raw materials are derived from, when it comes to dietary supplements, certain raw materials are synthesized, certain raw materials are uh, naturally occurring in nature, like whey protein is a byproduct of the cheese manufacturing business. Um, if we think about like say liver extract, right? That's a naturally occurring material, but amino acids and creatine are actually synthesized. Now, they, the starting raw materials in the context of creatine is actually a byproduct of uh, coal manufacturing limestone, uh, a, a compound is mixed with the amino acid sarcosine and that's how you get creatine. And the nice part about the material that's made end to end in Germany is everything is sourced from Europe. We're talking the starting raw material, the limestone, the water washing, everything. Now, uh, over here we have creatine raw material that's made in China. This is what most companies, if you buy creatine on the interwebs, you're getting this raw material here. It's made end to end in China. Now it can have byproducts that are not necessarily health promoting, whereas the creatine raw material made in Europe is extremely clean. And that's why at Myoscience, that's the only form of creatine that we offer is the raw material made in Germany, made in Europe, because you're not taking micrograms, you're taking up to 20 grams per day. Now think about that. So if you're taking a compound 20 grams per day and there's any residual solvents or not so healthy uh, ingredients, for example, if it's washed with, in this context, uh, arsenic or, sorry, not arsenic, um, different solvents, there shouldn't be any arsenic or anything like that in, in any creatine. Um, I think a lot of people are concerned about that. Uh, but different solvents and so forth, uh, not gonna be healthy, whereas the raw material made in Europe is washed with water. And that's why this is all that we offer over at Myoscience. Now this is important because creatine is so popular right now. And that's why I wanted to make this video and answer any questions that you all have. Um, and this is why uh, we started doing our own manufacturing here at Myoscience so that we can c control the entire process. So I wanna make sure to address any questions here. I haven't done a stream on my phone in a very long time. Uh, any questions, let me know if you can hear me okay. Uh, let me know in the comment section below, my friends, and any creatine related questions, uh, also let me know. And again, the reason why we're doing this live right now is I just wanted to kind of show you behind the scenes of different raw materials, let you know what some people are doing in the, raw, in the dietary supplement space. You know, you have a lot of brands online that are selling creatine. Most of it is this stuff made in China. Uh, the cost here is about $8 a kilogram. It's really, really cheap. and. That's because it's only actually an 84% material, whereas the material, the raw material made in Europe is a 99% purified material, really clean. As I mentioned, all the starting raw materials are made uh, and sourced in Germany, end to end. So the short answer here is 
creatine is synthesized by mixing sarcosinate with cyanamide. Now, um, that is, it has nothing to do with cyanide. I know it sounds similar, cyanamide, but that is what is derived from limestone. So the cyanamide is mixed with the sarcosine in uh, basically beakers, and that's how you get the crystalline creatine raw material. Now, the limestone is a byproduct uh, to make the cyanamide. Um, that is a byproduct of the coal manufacturing process. So uh, in China, obviously a lot of coal is burned, but when uh, you do this um, outside of, of Germany, there are solvents that can be utilized and those solvents can be uh, problematic. So again, I just wanna check into the feed here. I'm gonna look at the, uh, any comments that you have on my computer, cause I can't see them on the phone. So um, let's check that out right now okay so uh comments questions uh let me know if y'all have any comments or questions now uh the reason why i think this is important and the reason why i want to make this video is again because when you're taking creatine you're not taking micrograms you're taking a minimum of 5 10 15 some people are doing 20 grams a day and so if there is any residual solvents or compounds that are not health promoting such as what you might be getting from from non-european sourced material um, that could become problematic, right? And so that can build up uh, over time. Now that noise that you heard, we're at the manufacturing facility, so there is a, an air compressor uh, and, and things like that. So let's see, the comments aren't showing up on my feed here. Are they show, oh, comments are disabled. Oh man, let me see if I can tweak that because I definitely want to get to your, your comments here. Um, why would the chat be disabled? Come on, YouTube, let's see what you can do. So I guess I can't hear from you. That is a shame. Let me see if I can adjust some things. I actually haven't done a stream from my phone in a very long time. Uh, okay, lighting is on. Dang, I can't get your, your live comments. That is a shame. Okay, so let's go through it. Um, for those of you that are gonna be watching the replay. Okay, so um, as I mentioned, um, creatine is synthesized. It's made from sarcosine mixed with cyanamide, which is derived from limestone, which is a byproduct of uh, the coal um, manufacturing uh, process. Um, and so it's technically, um, technically vegan. You know, there's no animal inputs or animals that are harmed in the making of creatine, although creatine is naturally found, of course, in red meat and seafood and things uh, like that. So that's where we get creatine uh, in the diet. But as many of you know, if you're vegan or vegetarian or you don't eat red meat, you're not getting much creatine uh, in your diet. And that's why vegans and vegetarians are individuals that stand to benefit the most from creatine supplementation. Now, the reason why creatine sourcing, again, not to beat a dead horse here, is so important is because you're not taking microgram levels. Like if you think about B12 or folate, you're taking 2,000 micrograms, right? This is a very, very small amount. When it comes to creatine, you might be taking 10, 15, 20 grams per day. So if you're getting a not so good creatine source, for example, that's not third-party tested for residual solvents and uh, potential uh, products that aren't so health promoting, you could be inadvertently exposing yourself to benzene, toluene, and other solvents that aren't healthy. And that's why I like the the uh, creatine raw material um, from Germany. So let's just get in here and, and talk a little bit more about this. And we're at the Myoscience Manufacturing Facility here today. So this is the Crea Vitalis raw material. And we use this in the micronized creatine bags that you get. This is a uh, 45 serving, uh, sorry, 75 serving container. This micronized material is so big and so fluffy, 10 kilograms fit in this box versus uh, 25 kilograms of the unmicronized in the same size box. Now, a lot of people are, have asked questions, you know, who should be taking the micronized versus unmicronized creatine? Well, the micronized creatine is really unique because the particles are so much more water soluble. So if you ever have taken creatine and you notice like gastrointestinal distress or it doesn't really uh, sit right with your stomach and things like that, I would definitely consider the micronized uh, creatine here. Um, it's really amazing, fluffy. Uh, this stuff is, is um, 
some of the best raw material that I've seen in the dietary supplement uh, space. Now, the unmicronized is more affordable. Um, it's great as well. A lot of people just love uh, the unmicronized version. So if you have a hearty gut, like I don't, I don't take the micronized because my gastrointestinal tract can tolerate the, the unmicronized uh, version. So that's that. Now, again, you know, this is what most people in the dietary supplement space, most companies, uh, are supplying to you because it costs eight dollars a kilogram. It's really affordable. Um, whereas this stuff right here costs twenty two dollars a kilogram. So it's almost two and a half times the cost. And uh, since most supplement companies are owned by private equity groups and venture capitalists and so forth, who are are very concerned about the bottom line, uh, you know, you're not going to be getting stuff like this. Now, the unmicronized version, the Crea Pure, um, that we launched our electrolyte sticks and we now have this as a standalone 60 serving container. Um, the Crea Pure is awesome. And as I mentioned, you know, the cool thing um, about what the Germans do is they wash it with water. There's no solvents, there's no residual compounds. Um, the calcium cyanamate, which has nothing to do with cyanide. So just don't be concerned when you hear that. Um, the calcium starting raw material is derived initially from limestone in the creatine synthesis process, and it's mixed with an amino acid compound called sarcosine. Uh, it's made in a, in a laboratory type setting. That's how you know, certain vitamins you, know, you can get derived uh, from nature, and other compounds are uh, synthesized in a clean fashion. And here at Science, we just prefer the material made end to end in Germany. Now there's nothing really inherently wrong uh, with the material made uh, in China. Uh, as I mentioned, you can you know, see this is what most dietary supplement companies um, are offering to you. This stuff costs about $8 a kilogram. We do contract manufacturing at our facility for other customers and some people don't want to pay $22 a kilo. So they buy, they, they choose this and, and we offer it to them. We give people the option, um, but that's just how things go. So I'm sorry that the comments are not working for you all. I would love to address any questions. So if you want to go back to this video after the actual live, uh, we can talk a little bit more about, and I can answer any questions uh, that you do have. So over at Myoscience, this is what we offer. End-to-end -end raw material made in Europe. And again, that's important because when you're taking things like protein, or creatine, you're not taking micrograms, you're taking grams of this per day, five, 10, 15, 20 grams of creatine per day. Some people are doing same with whey protein, you know, same with some of the, the other things like collagen. This is why uh, a really good clean collagen would be better than say one made, um, you know, in Indonesia or China or something like that, where you really don't know uh, what the inputs are. So to summarize, for the fourth or fifth time, repetition matters. Um, certain dietary supplements, for example, if we think about berberine, this is hand harvested, uh, the Himaberb raw material hand harvested in the Himalayas, right? We don't have to worry about sourcing as much because most of the berberine in the world is either gonna come from uh, India or China, um, and there's hand harvested versions or sometimes there's synthetic berberine, which I wouldn't recommend, you know, uh, in the context of vitamin B12, this is made by a microbial fermentation, uh, in the context of creatine, um, you know, this is synthesized all creatine in the world outside of the creatine that you get in your red meat or seafood or something, uh, is actually synthesized, uh, in, you know, beakers and things in a, in a very uh, highly controlled fashion. But what, what I, the reason why, you know, Myosense, we, we only use the German material in our products uh, is because it's water washed and it, all of the inputs are sourced in Europe, okay? So was this helpful? If it was, hit that like button. Let me know, my friends. I'm, I'm not sure why the comments are not working. I'm grateful that you're on here live. This was a little bit spontaneous, sort of last minute. Um, if you would like more behind the scenes, this is our, our facility here. Um, we can talk about, actually, let me just walk over. I, I want to share with you a little bit more about um, magnesium. This is a, uh, a magnesium that I'm particularly um, excited uh, about. And uh, so this magnesium right here is actually made in Belgium 
This is called ATA Mag, really awesome. Magnesium acetyl torate. Um, you'll be hearing a lot more about that uh, down the road, but uh, magnesium, I think is really important. We're gonna be hearing much more about magnesium in the years to come because it is a very important mineral that many people are deficient in, yet I don't think it's on the radar for a lot of folks. And there's a wide array of different forms from magnesium oxide to magnesium citrate that are very popular uh, in a lot of dietary supplements. But uh, you're gonna be hearing a lot more about magnesium acetyl torate. So I appreciate you all being on live uh, with us here. We had a smaller group. Sorry that the comment section was for some reason not working on my phone, but look forward to addressing any comments you have about creatine uh, in the uh, comment section after I post this video. All right, have a good night.